for the record, can you tell me your full name? For Ma Mary Leona Swan, S W A W N, Wright. <laughs> Beautiful. And Mrs. Wright, where were you born? Birmingham, Alabama. And what year was that? 1906. And what were the parent, your parents' names? Uh, my father and my mother's name. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Your father's name? Morgan M. Swan, S-W-A-N-N. -N. And your mother's name? Martha Walker. And do you remember your grandparents' names? That's going back grandparents to Grandparents were handicapped, lost my father before I was born uh -huh. ex in explosion. And what type of explosion was that? And where we, he was working, my mother's, it happened, just, they said, she was still carrying me. And it was an explosion at the job, on the job. When they came, he was, they couldn't do anything for him. It was too late. He had been burned to death. Sorry to hear that. Mm -hmm. And your mom, you lived with her for? Yeah, my mom, my grandma. You lived with your grandmother, too? Uh-huh, my grandmother. They had a business, a restaurant business. She and her, her grand, my grandparents. And, and that was in Birmingham? Hmm. That was in Birmingham? Yes. That's all the thing. That's the only part I know anything about is Birmingham. I see. And I never really, I didn't grow up in Birmingham. My mother, I was told, they moved to um, Cleveland, I guess, around when, no, they moved to Chicago when I was five. So where did they have the restaurant business in Chicago? Did they have the restaurant business in Chicago? My grandparents? Yes. That's a good question. I guess so, because that's where the, all of my young life was, mm -hmm. in Chicago. Mm -hmm. and, and do you remember moving to Chicago, or can you tell us about that, or you just remember that one day you were there? I, I can only remember. I think I remember, but I, I, I'm not sure because friends who knew where I was born, you hear them talk it so much, it becomes realistic, you know? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I never been there myself as an individual, so I can go there as a visit. I understand it's still home, it's still there. I have friends who still visit there. Exactly. I do know that I, number, my address was 306. St. Joy Street, Birmingham, Alabama. That's pretty good. <laughs> and where did you live in Chicago? Okay. <laughs> I don't remember. The, oh, yes. Uh, can't know if I remember the number, though. Chicago. Do you remember the street? Hmm? Do you remember the street? Mm -hmm. What's the name of the street? Vincent, St. Vincent. St. Vincent? Mm -hmm. And and did you go to school from St. Vincent? Yes, I went to school there. What was the name of the elementary uh, school? Mm. James R. Doolittle was the elementary school. And then? And I, out of that, to Wendell High in Chicago. What's the name of the high school? Wendell Phillips. Wendell, Wendell Phillips. W-E-N-D-E-L-L. -E -L. Wendell. L. Phillips. Phillips. Uh -huh. High school. High school. Was that an integrated school? Uh, yes, I guess, because I didn't know anything about segregation. I, I really learning more about segregation as an adult. Is that right? Is what what year did you graduate from high school? Did you graduate from high school? Uh, mm -mm, I was still there. I graduated in Chicago, oh, Cleveland. Oh. 
at high, uh, South Park High, South Park in, in Cleveland today, I guess it's Central High School? South Park mm -hmm, High School. No, not Central. South Park had a school. Is that right? Mm hmm. They had a car. Uh, I'll show you part of that. I think here. In your book. Okay. Just a moment. Oh. Can we just sit this down for a minute? No, I hope you want to get the book out for you. It's not this book, though. You've been through here. Well, you know what? Why don't we get the picture out at the end? Okay. And then you show us the picture at the end. Okay. Okay. So you, you graduated from the 12th grade? Uh huh. And, and then when, what did you do after you graduated? Well, I went to evening school for a while. Evening school? Uh huh. And I was trying to think of the, the name of this college. We could go in the afternoon. You, you go to school, they call go to school. They left me that quick. Tell me this. When you were going to evening school in Cleveland, is that uh -huh. where it was in uh -huh. Cleveland? Was it an integrated school? Hmm. You know why I hesitate? See, I was, my father lived in Cleveland. My mother lived with me in Chicago. And when I came to Cleveland to visit the first time, I was quite young, because my brother, oh, I, what I'm come, trying to refresh my member, they said you had a Luna's Park here in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. And my dad said, kids, get ready. We're going to Lula's Park because this is our day. And I asked him, what do you mean by our day? This is the day they call people have at the park right. for dancing and, and enjoying the, you know, the swings. In other words, that was the day for colored people to have all, do anything they want. And he looks, he said, where are you going? I said, I'm not going. And so my dad said, because this was his second marriage, and I was his second group of children, my, uh, but he said, well, this is Color Folks Day. I said, I never learned, I don't know nothing about no Color Folks Day. So and I didn't go. And you didn't go? I did not go. Mm -mm. It's right, I understand, it's at Wood Hill area today. Oh. I never did go, no. Oh, okay. So when you went to school, did you go with white children to school? South Park, we, I never, we was integrated. I suppose I guess what you call it. We, yeah. didn't, <laughs> we didn't punch you out as colored. You was a, you were a classmate. Isn't that interesting? You was classmate. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. So take me back to your childhood in high school. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's not fair. <laughs> 101 now, <laughs> and she wants me to take her back to high school. Did they have high school dances? Oh, yes, and I fell in love with one of the uh, instructors. With one of the instructors? The teacher. He didn't have such stuff. He was just being kind to let me keep me in school because he knew my mother was a widow, mm -hmm. and I can remember when I leave, because I didn't live too far from the high school, and my mother, what was his name? He's Swanson, I think was his last name. I think it was. Anyway, my mother said, you keep them off the street. I'll keep them out of the house. And I didn't know at the time what they were talking about. Mm -hmm. But she meant I wasn't going to play with the boys, you know, and get funny. And he said to her, he used to say to my mother, we're coming home soon, we're doing fine. Just You just keep them off the house, and I'll keep them off the street. That was a little motto. That was a little motto. That was a motto. It so, wasn't to me that that was, that was me. Right. So they didn't let children just roam the streets like they uh -uh. do now. I, I, sw I don't know. I know I didn't. <laughs> right. So did your brother go to high school with you? No. My brother and I have separate parents. Okay. He, uh, we have the same father, mm -hmm. but we have different mothers. I see, mm -hmm. I see. 
and it was just the two of you. Tell me. My brother's past. What was his name? Um, Godfrey Swan. Godfrey Swan. Mm-hmm. Did 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 you go to school dances? Did they have school dances? Oh yeah, like we. Oh, we. I said, oh yeah, we had a dance at the end of the season, the year. And the, and the dance is more or less for the graduates who graduated in the seventh grade, coming uh, going into the ninth grade, eighth grade. Because the seventh, when I seventh grade coming, I never forget uh, when I hit seventh grade, the seventh and the eighth grades who are not graduating and coming out, you had to serve the graduates. And uh, man, we did the cooking, we baked the cakes, and we could get everything ready for them to have a good time. And if you kept your grades up, you being associated with the girls that are graduating, it was an honor. Mm -hmm. And we had these ribbon strips, you know, you put a bow you put up. Mm -hmm. And so someone said, I'm Bob. And my teacher said, what's wrong with me? I said, I'm not cooking this year. This is my third year. I said, I'm wearing ribbon, and now I got another year, two, two years before I graduate. <laughs> so. The question came then, if I didn't cook, I wouldn't graduate then or something they was going to do. They were going to punish me. But then she said that I definitely didn't cook. I just sat and let my mother go. Mother went to school and whoever, she and the teacher and the principal, and they came to some type of agreement I know. In other words, in my day, we listened to our teachers and parents. Whatever they said, we did. Right. We don't, f not the way I hear them night, now how they fight about. And no talking back. Mm -hmm. No talking back. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's something. What, did you go to Sunday school? Did you go to church oh, as Lord a child? Oh, Lord, mercy. Baptist born. <laughs> Were you? Always <laughs> Church was it. You like you said that we were coming from. We had been to prayer meeting that night. I think that's was my mother. We could do number six as children. But anyway, when we passed, um, there was music, and I was the, we, the kids about what in the morning three I was a four I guess all together. But I popped my finger and moved my feet. Mary, what are you doing? You just left church. <laughs> Oh, you weren't allowed to do that. We didn't. Okay. Mm -mm, we didn't. Church girls that was had that. to behave in a certain way. I learned in my later years, that's a myth though, that's not really true. And I said from my own experience, because I've never had a desire to do things that wasn't respected, or that I couldn't tell you I have been there. Mm -hmm. when once one of the students told my mother one day, the, the girl coming from school, we stopped, and they asked me something, and then I, I didn't know but if what happened. It came up again up among the parents. And one of the girls said, I bet you Mary told her mother, and her mother told our mother. <laughs> And that's how your great whatever, grandma was. Whatever was going on, they broke it up before it got started. <laughs> the parents were on top and they of put it. Yeah, they put it on me. And they put it on you. You said, you know, Mary tells her mother everything. That was so good. So we talked. That was good. Mm -hmm. That was good. Do you, do you remember Sunday school? Hmm? Do you remember Sunday school? Oh, Sunday school. Yeah, we went to Sunday school. What church did you attend? What church did you belong to as a child? Um, what was the name? I can, in the South, mother left the South when I was five years old. Right. So in Chicago? Chicago, I went to, uh, I was going to think of the church is still here. I see it. It's a Baptist church. And then when you, when? I was living here then at the time. With, but my when you came to Cleveland? Yeah, when we came to Cleveland, what? Don't ask me about Cleveland because uh, um, it's a shame to say the years I've been here, I don't love it. Never has. But 
but there was a member in the family that got sick. And with a small family, it was up to my mother to come. There was nobody left but my mother, which brought me automatically because I didn't say I'm not going. <laughs> right. And that's how you came to Cleveland, to take care of a family member. With, uh, with, and uh, my mother's past. And in fact, I've, this has been a fact, it's the truth. I said, if I go back to Chicago, I'll never leave. I won't come back to Cleveland. I said, if you're not moving, Mama, because we're just the two of us, I said, I'll wait for you. You go, and I'll stay till you come back. And that's the truth. As of today, I have not been back to Chicago because if I go back, I wouldn't be here today. Isn't that something? What is your first church that you joined in Cleveland? Do you remember? No, I, uh, I imagine it was my first church, but I don't know, because here's what's happened with me. Was my grandmother being a handicapped, they called us the three links, my mother, my grandmother, and me. The three links? The three links. And you see it's you see all three. My grandmother was a handicap. You see this. She, she had, my grandmother had an accident when my mother was born. My grandmother only had one hand with two fingers on there. One foot, one foot. But she taught me everything I know. Is that right? What mm. was her name? Mary Walker. So you I were named her. after her. Fond memories of that grandmother. And my, my, my aunt, my father's sister, Leona, that's her name. That's my middle name. Oh, okay. So my name is Mary. Leona Swan. And I was looking in the church director today, they spell it S Swan, S W A I N. I don't know who's doing it, and I, I've held my temper back because I don't want to send the, the note to the church. I said, all the years I've been at St. James, I've been at St. James since 1932, uh, 38. You joined St. James in 1938? 38. That was with Gomez. That was the pastor Reverend, Gomez? Reverend, uh-huh, Pastor Gomez. He, so he turned out, he was a bishop, he turned out as a bishop too. I, bear, I am buried, but I have survived four bishops in our church. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Boy, when you joined the church, were you married? No, uh, Lawrence and I got married in 1948. We were, that was the same thing. <laughs> Where did you, that was your husband's name? Mm -hmm. Lawrence? Lawrence J. Wright. And when did you meet him? Well, when where did you meet him? I met him here in Cleveland. Okay. Well, through, uh, well, it was through a friend. It, Lawrence had a friend. They were friends, but her girlfriend was Catholic. And I was, and she used to have. Uh, dinners, ch church, sell dinners on the weekend for the church. Mm -hmm. And uh, someone said they told Lawrence to have somebody I want you to meet. And he said he looked at me and I didn't see him anymore. And I, I've asked him this since, what happened? He said, I looked at you and, you, and I, looked, I said, oh, you didn't want to be bothered with nobody like me. And we didn't meet again for two years or over. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And then when you met again? We married. You married. <laughs> <laughs> and how many years were you married? Fifty-two. Fifty-two. Did you have children? No, he has children. We didn't have children together, but I raised five children for him. Is that right? When we first married. Mm -hmm. Boy, what were they? Stepmother. Names? You were the stepmother? Mm hmm Well, tell me, did you work? 
how can I say that? I, I worked off and on. It, it wasn't really work other than to me because when I, when I worked, that was in my later years, I worked at Peerless Department Store. I, see, I started on the ground floor and took him three stories up. The owner of that, he's passed. What type Mr. of work did Go you Wasser, do there? Joseph. Hmm? What type of work did you do there? Selling. So, you were sales. Sales, uh -huh. sales only. Uh -huh. And what type of things did you sell? Clothing. Clothing? Ladies' clothing? Ladies' clothing, men's clothing, children's clothing. <laughs> it was a credit store. It was a credit store? Uh-huh. In the community of that um, a lot of uh, our people who had uh, wasn't able to go and pay for what they were wanting to buy at the time, but they could come to the credit store where I work with Mr. Goldwasser and get a bill, you know. Then they could pay so much on the bill. When you said that, I remember how children remember. I was downtown one day, and uh, he looked up and he said to his mother, Mom, that's Miss Peerless. <laughs> and I looked back and laughed. I said, I wish that was Miss Peerless. He, you sold me that suit. It was a little girl suit. Mm -hmm. See, this is a good explanation. The mother never told him. Mm -hmm. The mother never told him. She couldn't afford to go anyplace else. And that was the only thing we had in the store left. A girl a snow girl suit. And he was a boy. <laughs> No, Mr. He Don't never forgave me. <laughs> <laughs> I was walking. That's that lady who sold me that little girl snow suit. <laughs> and his, the store owner was Mr. Gomez? Mm -hmm. Where was the store located? Well, you see, uh, Go, uh, Gomez, Joseph Gomez was the owner of the store. Mm -hmm. And he had a brother, Paul, mm -hmm. and a lot of a harbor. I wonder what in Liberty High. I don't keep in touch with them. I try. I would like to, whether they would say, because as a part of Bass Chevrolet, it's part of Gold Oh. Well, some of their relatives all, all there together as of today. So where was the store located? Hmm? Where was the store located? 26 in Woodland. 26 in Woodland. Mm hmm And these were... They had a fire. Uh -huh. And you go in that, well, look, it's the one I said, you wouldn't believe that a spot. You know, it looks like not as big as what we sit in on now. Right, and that Used was to be a store. store. And you said you started on the first floor? Yeah. Uh -huh. And then you moved up? We, yes, because number one, it was nothing but a tie shop when I went in. It was during the war. The war was just starting and the men were going to service. And the sister saw me in the street. I was walking, got up that morning, went out for, I don't know, for, just accidentally, and picked up an old newspaper, which was a call post. Was and I looked at it, and I said, mm, they don't need anybody. But I was, I had just gotten married, too, and, and I had never worked. But my mother couldn't work, because she was partially blind. And this is what I told my husband when he met me. I said, my mother does not work. But what she does, she keeps the house, she can cook, and she's able to take, just like I'm here, taking care of herself. Mm -hmm. And I said, I let her do that because it gives her independence to feel as though I'm not living on you. Right. I'm being paid, you know, I'm right. paying my way. That was nice. Mm -hmm. that and, was and, and so you, um, this store that you worked in, so you went into the war, the war started. Yeah, Tell me, where were you when the war started? What was happening? Did you hear it on the radio? When the war started? Mm -hmm. No, because I went into work. I was out looking, <laughs> picked up this dirty newspaper, uh -huh. and a lady, she knocked on one, and that's where clothing is important. I never forget, I was wearing green and yellow, combination two-piece suit, and she knocks it. So she said, uh, "Who?" I said, oh, I saw an ad in the paper in the office for, and they wanted a girl. So I went back, and I, she saw me walk out. She knocked on the window. This, 
she was a supervisor at the time. I didn't know, but this was the beginning of the war. And she said, did you get hired? I said, oh, no, they just hired a girl. I think I still have a picture there. She's a lawyer now. Oh, she said, go upstairs and tell my brother to hire you. I said, yeah, tell him I said, hire you. He hired me, and I went. I, I say world record. I had the best job I ever had in my life. Mm -hmm. I travel. I turn out to be real, a, a real buyer, not just a buyer from the book like they do now. I have a girl I don't try to explain. She says she's a buyer. She's been there. Cleveland hasn't given her one blessed thing that she couldn't sit in college and read. What she's doing at her job was the same thing she did when she was in school. When I left school, I had to step up. Mm -hmm. I had, I go to the market, go to New York, and <laughs> one of the whites in particular said to me one day, oh, uh, you're here at, on, at a convention. I said, no, I'm not on a convention. He said, what are you doing? I said, working. And you were a buyer. I got, it's got a write-up in the picture, Amsterdam News in New, in New York. Really? Uh-huh. I was working just like she was working. And I don't know whether and I had a picture of my boss and I taking the inventory of what I have spent to see how much I have left mm -hmm. and how much I can spend. Okay. And that was interesting. And the girls who worked with me, they cooperated. Did they? Did you work with black girls or? Huh? Were they black? Black girls. Uh -huh. And they had white too there, but they were in the position, well, they could sell if they wanted, but they didn't. They were more like in the uh, office air help, and they were family too. Okay. I said this for Mr. Goldwasser. Excuse. I don't think I could. Even now he's dead. I don't think he was ever predestined. And I tell you why. He wanted to get into politics. And he couldn't sit up there and be predator and get into politics. He said what? He couldn't sit in the office and be predator against. Prejudice? You're right. Uh -huh. He had to be a person who was very open. Mm -hmm. He accepted and gave in. Uh, when I worked late, he would bring me home in this Cadillac. I, I was riding a Cadillac for a long time. And another thing, though, but helping him to build a store. He didn't put me under pressure like I see a lot of these girls are doing now. If I work past lunch, he said to the secretary, Mr. Roker, call Majestic Hotel, that was a hotel, and have us bring Mary's lunch down. So when the next customer would leave, he wanted me to make the money, which I didn't see it then like that, but I had a nice hot lunch. <laughs> That was From wonderful. the hotel. Uh huh. And the Majestic Hotel uh -huh. was close by? Uh huh, right here. So uh, that was right, not too far from the store, you know. Mm -hmm. That was black too, but I don't know why they closed. What, what, so most of the people that came to the store, they were black people? That most shot of them, yes. Yes. Uh huh. They were more, uh, there were people, and they weren't, there were people who could not afford to, uh, to get credit. Any place else? That was good. That was a good thing for It you. worked, yeah. Mm -hmm. That was a very good they thing. They used to say that's why I got a Giddish head. A what? A Giddish head. What does that mean? Jewish. Because oh. <laughs> yeah. you were trained by one. Was he Jewish? Mr. He was a, but they picked me up first because that's what she told me when she hired me. She said, you got a Giddish head. And then she said, she said, you don't think like others. Is that right? And I didn't. I didn't. Mm -hmm. how, how, what, what do you think made you different? What, what you I well, when I was quite young, I remember uh, we had these uh, agencies. Would, well, not yeah, they were just men come along like uh, selling perfumes, mm -hmm. but they would give it to you, your children in the area to take so many, and so that he come back and give us a commission like. And our parents let us sell, you know. Okay. That there was door to door you were selling. 
yeah, they go to, you know, we didn't have to go at church or at a gathering with your friend, your neighbors, you know. Mm -hmm. You push you out in the street, really. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> I don't know what happened. My mother was home when he came to collect to see what I had done. And Mama said to him, is that on, on one case? He said, yes, that she resold it. Well, they bought it. They didn't want it because they didn't like the perfume. <laughs> The members bought it because it was buying from the church member. See? Oh. That was it. Okay. So my mother said, don't bring her anymore. She said, she can't sell no more. She said, okay. they stopped. Were you belonging, did you belong to St. James at that time? No, we belonged to a, a Baptist church. That's all I, I can remember. We belonged to, and this Baptist church wasn't too far from our house either. So you, you, you. We belonged to Mount Herman here for a while. You belong to Mount Herman? Mount Herman, when my, my mother, lifetime. Okay, okay. Have you traveled after you got married? Did you travel any to other countries? Or? No, I, I didn't do that much traveling. The traveling I did was for buying, and I go in the areas where I'm going to buy, which was around Florida and up around New Hampshire and in that area. Those were, those were the places that, that you went to buy? Uh-huh. And did the people receive you well? Very well, except when we got to Florida, I went in and the f friend that was with me, she was very fair. And the girl at the counter said to her, oh, ignored me, and so walked over to the, my company she was with Oh, she said, can I help you? And she said, no, not because Mrs. Wright, I was married in is the buyer. She flipped. And the dad don't know I you know, I bought a half a dozen blouses and shipped them out as it as it walked out. And gave her the number to ship them out. She was surprised. <laughs> she was really surprised. Yeah, she, she was shocked. <laughs> I, I don't know what she was able to eat that night or not. <laughs> <laughs> she was that shocked. And you bought a half a dozen. And I bought a half a dozen. And that was when the war was going on. Uh -huh. did, did, That's about So you worked all the you worked all through the war, so you didn't have it hard like some people had it. No. You know, sometimes I think we make it hard for ourselves, too, because we, okay, I tell you what happened when I got the job. They hired me, and they had at this store, things go watch store, and there were three or four girls, they were all black, working, but they were fair fairer than me. And when the supervisor, when the manager of the store came out, or sister, and said, I want you to meet Mary Swan. I said, Swan, I, when I first started it. said, she's going to be your supervisor. And you know what the other girl said? What does she have right on here? Because I was black. And she was black too, though. But she was fair. Yes. When I came to Cleveland, I was interviewed, and they look at me, and they say, well, you uh, have the quality that we ne we need, but you're too dark. Is that what they were saying? Cleveland's been that way. Mm -hmm. That's why I said never, never like, and I, I didn't go to school. Be I was not educated, I said that way, for skin color. You know what, I didn't know anything about that, mm -hmm. but I, I learned it. In my young days, because my mother was here on illness, too, you know, and the family, because my grandmother's sister, who was the only one she lived in Aunt Maddie, they lived in Boston I know, with them. Which, so when my mother died, I came, I went to, went to we first stopped in Boston, went to Boston to be there with my grandmother's sister. But it's something funny, it's what you learn as you get older. Things are not always the same, and as a child or a young person, you expect something and you find you're disappointed. The hardest part about that job is holding your own dignity and don't let nothing get you down. If you think you're right, wait for the next person to tell me, I don't think that's right. I think you're wrong or whatever. Get a second opinion. Because there's nothing wrong with constructive criticism. Right. Right. Mm -mm. 
So you learned to accept constructive criticism early on. And that's what kept you employed and allowed you to work with so many people. Martin Luther King Jr. What comes to mind when you think of Martin Luther King Jr.? I've, with me, I don't think he hits me like, uh, well, other people, uh, Southern people, because not being brought up in the South, there's so much of that I didn't know. And my mother, as I said, left when I was five years old, and I have, as of now, you look at the person, I haven't been back. So, do you think that when Martin Luther King fought for civil rights, don't you think that it helped us in the it North? It did, definitely. Someone had to do it. And then you saw doors open up as yes, a result? Right. It's just, it, it showed me the difference between the South and the North, definitely. Because my mother f explained to me so in talk because she was curious. I was curious, that was it. When I said to my mother, this, the Southern, here's what she, for explanation, the Southern white, when they hire you, they don't hire you really more like for skin, but it's just a, it was just expected to be black. But my mother told me, as I grew up though, because she worked both. She worked South and she worked North. Mm -hmm. And she said the South would have five employees if they had five people to be taken care of. They had children and a husband and a wife, you know. Mm -hmm. They hired according to the, the statics of their family. She said you come North, that's where she was by myself, when you come north, they'll hire you to cook, to clean, to do witness. You do everything. Oh. But you only get that one job, you know, that, that one, one pay. That one pay. But she said when you the south, when they get through paying everybody for what they do, she said, they aren't paying you on the low that much on than the north. She straightened me with that real quick, like my mother. My mother was a pastry cook too. I didn't know her. She was a cook too good if she went. Mm -hmm. So, so then, at the end of the war, tell me, do you remember hearing about Marcus Garvey? Who? Marcus Garvey. Do you remember hearing about him? I remember him, but I can't remember too much about him. Too much about uh -uh. him. And, and. When um, you belonged to your church in St. James and you got active into some of the activities for St. James, tell me some of the things that you did at the church. Well, I organized the Alacrity Group Club, which is there now. What's the name of that? Alacrity. Alacrity? Uh-huh. Can, can I get up and show you something? Yes. I'm going to book. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to try to take it still if somebody didn't take it. Okay. All right. Ready? Okay. Tell me about this, Alacrity. This is you, Mary Wright. I see your name first up there. I organized them. And what did they do? Uh, to organize something in a church like this, it's like you, know, you get a group of people together for a need. And um, not for yourself. And I say that because you see my name at the top of the, wait a minute, if you don't see, see the Alacrity Club members. Right. That tells you what each what? one of Winifred, right. Winifred Watts, the president, and Rebecca Randall was mm -hmm. the vice president, yeah. Francis mm -hmm. Clark, recording secretary, mm -hmm. Doris Hill, financial secretary, mm -hmm. Madeline Lee, treasurer, 
and Dorothy Wilson, the chaplain. And the cookbook, you sold the cookbook to make money for the church? Yes, uh-huh. And what, do you remember what year you did this in? Uh, what, uh, yeah, I did, uh, let's see now, if the part's still here. Well, I think it might be in the front. The copyright was 1987. That's it. 1987. Mm -hmm. Now, tell me, I have, I see another picture book you have here, and I wanted to ask you a little bit about that. Um, this is a picture, I'll hold this. This is a picture, and we're going to show the camera this picture later. Okay, and, and tell me about this picture again. This is, I gave, it's a style show on wheel. And this is when we were trying to raise money. You know, when you're poor, we, we didn't come up with big money like they have today. <laughs> and someone said, how can we give a style show? What I suggested, that the members were coming, which fell on me the end because being president, so I took the job to go to the merchant, oh, the owner of the, of the car, mm -hmm. and to the, um, they'd go to the merchant, and I asked for them to loan us a car. And he said, well, so each one of these cards, and what I did, excuse me, I was trying to see if there was, oh yeah, they, that's, uh, that's the one part though. This one there, isn't it? Yeah, okay. What I was trying to do was this. I, like you advertise now on the TV? Yes. Commercial? Yes. To get the merchants that loan us a car for a style show. Mm -hmm. And this is a parking area of St. James as of today. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we, they let us have a car. And we wore, see our long dresses? Yes. Oh, we got dressed up, honey, and it was, <laughs> like, we loved to dress. You loved to dress. They're beautiful. So and what year? This was like maybe 1950? I am it's been, yeah, it's been. Okay. No, see, is there a date on that? No date. Wait, I. Perry Studio, though. And that was, uh at 10817 Earl Avenue. And uh, this this looked to be like That's in the 50s. It was, it was 450. Now when, when you raised the money, it what did you do? We raised money because everyone, we had the, the people to come to the see the style show, you didn't think we'd have that free. Yeah, but then what did you do with the money? For the church, and, we, and to, have to, to have to pray for mortgage, Oh. Had a mortgage then. Yes. We had light bill. We had every utility that you had at home. Okay. But since then, you I got that here too. We have the burning of the mortgage, which um, I, one of these books. Well, you could just tell me about it, and then we'll find it oh, later. Okay. Now here's that. Here's my past one. Of, that's he's paid. Mm. Oh. My heart. Oh, he's dead now, though. He died. And a lot of these girls are right here. I was here today, so that's what she has all the time. Is. That's their part, Barbara Danford's mother. Is that right? That's Barbara Danford's mother. Isn't that something? Mm hmm. Yeah, that takes you back when you look at this and you think of all the people you knew then. Uh huh. And these were. Let me hold it up for the camera. Next one, I have to be the director. Mm -hmm. No, she's the, of the Y, and oh. this is her mother. Right here. Okay. She's dead now, Nancy. And Mrs. Weaver, she was the uh, Hold on, harvest. One little second. You want to just shoot the pictures and have her voice in the background? Yes. And Debbie Weaver. Uh -huh. Okay.
tell me, this is the president of Wilberforce? This was the president. He's passed. It was the president of Wilberforce. And what was the occasion? At uh, Every year we even have just fashion shows where I long clothes, I guess, making money for the church. And he would come and support? We, we, if we invo invited him, you know. Okay, just a second. Okay, so I don't want to go through all of these, but what I do want to do is have you flip through here real quick and tell me uh, a couple of real important ones that you think we should look at. Okay. Because uh, these seem to be all the fashion show. So is there, is there, um, this is a, this is somebody you want us to see? Not really. She passed. She's a young girl. And this is the fashion of the day. This is a this is a good one because some of these girls are gone. Mm -hmm. Some of. And what was the club? Uh, the alac uh, the alacrity. The alacrity club. club. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's me right there. That's you. Mm hmm That's me. What, She's passing. Are here. you in the center? Hmm. That's you in the center. And it's that I'm in what in. A and which one is, is this one you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me hold that for the camera to see. So the Alacrity Club did a lot of good things. I organized them. That's wonderful. <laughs> That's wonderful. So let me just, we, we kind of get the idea that you were very busy in, in church with your club. And I wanted to just. I, I, I was married in church, but I wasn't married but of church wedding. We went to church mm -hmm. to marry that Saturday in, in the office. We were, that's what it was. I wanted to be married. We, he and I both wanted to be married at church. Reverend Newsom, who at the time was our assistant pastor, mm -hmm. he said, no, we're going into the main auditorium I never forget. Oh, she said, "What I we had both been married before now." He said, "What I put together stays together." And Lord knows, fifty-two years. Fifty-two years. That was wonderful, 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 wasn't it? And you could, you know, he was a he was a type of Christian. That you didn't have, he would come back and say, you didn't hear him saying, I'm a Christian. You could look at him. And the you way could, he cared you, so. you, you knew he was a Christian. He was a little different. And you both worked in the church together. We both sang, the, he sang in choir and I did too. He also ushered. Okay. And I said, and he also flirted. And he also flirted. <laughs> How about you? I ain't playing. You know, I'm the good girl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the good girl. He said I didn't have to, I didn't have to fight. They said they wouldn't let me alone. Okay. But I know how far to go. It, it, when you hear, hear an adult, these are some things just great for my daughter's graduation. Now, but this is my, she's the one I tell you. She's here now. She's in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. That's my brother's granddaughter. They say he spoiled her. She has illness. It's too bad. We don't think she's going to. She's a hot sauce William. In law. But she's in the bed now. And she can't take care of herself. And this, you. Are you in this picture? Oh, boy. I, I, am I? Look where I am. Where are you? Right there. This is the girl. She's down and she has cancer, uh -huh. but she still is right here in the. Uh, uh, Her in name the, is Earlene. Earlene. Mm -hmm. I know Earlene. That's Earlene. Let when, me show uh, the camera. That's, this okay. Picture of, okay. Of you. That's Earlene. And she is right down front. Okay, 
and you all were beautiful. What was the occasion? Her wedding. Her wedding, Earlene's wedding. Mm -hmm. And were you her bride's maid of honor? No. I, I arranged the girls. You did? Mm-hmm. I helped her with the wedding. Boy. I was like just a chaperone, and her brother would say to her, don't sit next to Mary because they won't look at you. They'll be looking at her. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> but that was a good friend. This is her, her best friend, too, on this side. Okay. I know some of the girls have passed. Yes. Tell me, we're going to kind of wrap this up. Huh? We're, we're coming to the end of this uh, interview. Morning, thank you. And I wanted to just ask you, as we come to the end of the interview, do you have a favorite saying? Is there something you say all the time or you heard your mother say a favorite saying? My mother used to say things like, you can't judge a book by the cover. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it. That's it. You cannot judge a book by its color. And my mother used to say, a hard head makes a soft, soft butt. butt. <laughs> you heard that one too? <laughs> And your, and your mother said, be careful of your friends. Mm -hmm. Be careful of your friends. Which Birds of a feather? No, my mother used to say, um, there was another one, to be, be careful. Watch your friends. Oh, don't believe, you listen, but don't believe everything you hear, half that you hear, and nothing that they say. Nothing what you see. Half of what you hear. Half of it, and nothing what they say. In other words, it just something you pick up, let it rest. Mm -hmm. And if you live long enough, some of it will come back to you. So what, what do you think the success for your long life has been? You are a hundred and one. Years old, what, what? and I'm looking for the second year yet. Good. And what, what 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 do you attribute that success to? I contribute that first to say like, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and all things shall be added. And that's the secret. That's a beautiful secret. Well, we want to say thank you so much for this interview. This has been a pleasure visiting with you. I've enjoyed it. You enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> really, it's different. You know, you don't, you don't like, no one likes being sick, but when it gets to the point where they look at you, well, if you're not sick, you should be dead. If you're not dead, what you're doing around here? <laughs> and I've been here 101 years, and I'm thankful. And I still say, they say, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and all things shall be added. God will not disappoint you. Man will, but God will. Thank you so much, Mrs. Wright. Thank you for coming. Yeah, I've man. enjoyed this. Believe oh. it or not, it's like a new day, new world for me. Is that right? Good. Thank I really you. enjoyed it. Good.